Okay, guys, it's just gone 10 past five. Thanks very much for all your hard work today. That's brilliant. See you next time. Thank you very much. Alistair, could you just close that machine for me, please? Is it turned off at the wall? Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Hi, my name's Richard Lampler. Yeah, and my name's Anthony Wake. We're going to be showing you a short film that we hope will change the way you think about how you recruit new staff. Tell them a little bit more about the film, Anthony. Well, what the film is basically about is 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 and to get employers to see how easy it is to recruit people with learning disabilities and Asperger's. That's totally it. Yeah. So we hope you're going to watch the film and uh, if you do watch the film then you're going to see us hit this lovely green light we've had specially made and you're going to see lots of clips of people doing really good jobs at their places of work. Um, but you might not want to watch the film, you might want to go and do what you were doing before. So. We'll give you a few moments to decide. Yeah. Um, so a few moments. Well, well, because I have Asperger's. Can you explain a bit more briefly? Because what do you mean? Is it like? Um, do you mean thirty seconds? Do you mean a minute? Do you mean like ten hours? Uh, uh, okay, just okay, explain. Okay, well, okay. So I. Okay, I, I, okay, yeah, okay, okay. That, totally hear you, Anthony. I reckon. 15 seconds, shall we agree on that? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's okay, fine. Okay, so we'll give, you 15, 15, we'll give you 15 seconds to decide. Yeah. Do you think they've got a joke? Yeah, I think they have got the joke, hopefully. Okay. I'm only going to make two generalisations about everyone you see on screen right now. One, they're all highly valued members of staff by their employers. And two, they've got learning disabilities or Asperger's syndrome. I've been involved in supporting people with learning disabilities into work for nearly 20 years. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's to be really wary about making generalisations. Each person has their own unique personality, skill set, family life, background and capacity to learn. So, you won't be surprised to learn that the amount of support and the nature of support that Jenny, here on my left, needed when she started work at the Body Shop was very different to the support that Owen, here on my right, needed when he started work at Poundland. And maybe you won't be surprised to learn that once they'd got to grips with the tasks their employers wanted them to do, they needed no more support or supervision than any other member of staff. But what was key in unlocking the potential for both Jenny and Owen was the fact that their employers offered them jobs that matched them just about perfectly as individuals. Is he going to want us to reverse the way we recruit new staff? Is he going to want us to fit our jobs to suit the skills of those people applying for the jobs? rather than expect our applicants to have the skills needed for the jobs we need doing. No, I'm not asking you to do that. But I am asking you to think outside those boxes of recruitment red tape that we seem to have got so used to and look at the bigger picture. That's better. And in return, I'm offering you the free support of a specialist recruitment agency in your area who will steer you through the whole process. And they'll work with you as professionally as any outside recruitment agency. Oh, and in case you missed it, yeah, it won't cost you anything. This film is being financed by money earmarked for innovative social inclusion projects in West Sussex. And here, in West Sussex, the specialist support agency that helps people with learning disabilities into work is called the Audingbourne Trust. Here at the Audimon Trust we support over a hundred adults with learning difficulties to learn work-based skills and to develop their confidence in a, a wide range of supported social enterprises. They come here for the day to learn 
a wide range of skills and to participate and produce goods and services for the local community. There isn't a typical person as such that we would support here. We, we, we work with people with a wide range of needs and abilities. Some, some of these people's needs are more apparent, some less so. I think you're going to be talking to Laura Carpenter later. So Laura, yep. what sort of things do you do here at the Audubon Trust? Uh, all the staff managers always be here. But what sort of things do you do? What do I do? Uh, independence. You want to be independent, yeah. yeah. And what sort of things, when you come to the Trust, Yeah. well, you tell me, what is it? Do you know what it says on your hat? Uh, for Christmas cooking. Does it say cooking? Yeah. Yeah. Because is that what you do here? Yeah. And when you leave the trust, yeah. when you leave the Audienborn Trust, I don't know, maybe next year or the year after. Or next year. Right. You're going to be leaving next year, are you? Yeah. And would you like to have a paid job? Yes, I do. Thank you. So Nora's been with us some time now and is developing her skills and confidence at her own pace. But, but every, every scenario is different and Jade, for example, she's been with us much more recently, referred to us from social services and again is really trying to move on with her, her life through a bit of support and confidence that she's gaining here. I work in the CAF and I do kitchen assistant. Um, I work in the wood department as well, which helped make this bench. Um, and I live at home with carers in Bognor. Okay, and why do you live with carers, Jade? Um, because I have a behavioural disability, um, which is called ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, which means I can kick off at one point and then be really relaxed the next point. Kick off? What yeah. do you do when you kick off? Um, I get stroppy, I kind of swear and get really upset and my carers get the most of that um, and so does other people around me. So. Okay. Where would you like to work in the future? Um, I'd like to work in my own kitchen and be a chef or go down the entertainment road and be a red coat in Butlins. Okay. And kind of do dance. So I'm, in, I'm obsessed with dancing, obsessed with music and obsessed with the celebrity lifestyle. So. Do you want to be a celebrity? Yeah. <laughs> Along with half the world, Jade? Yeah. The staff at the Audubon Trust build up relationships with the people they support over time. What's crucial is that they get to know them as individuals, always making themselves available when anyone wants to sit down for a chat. So that one is more for his hospice. The work aid team is the part of the Audubon Trust that works with people to find paid employment. Whether you have an opportunity for 40 hours a week or for just 4 hours a week, WorkAid will visit you so that they can get a total understanding of what's involved. Then, back at the base, they will identify the most suitable person to put forward for an interview, and you'll be supported to make any minor adaptations to your recruitment procedures if necessary, to ensure that they are totally accessible. Whether you offer the person the job immediately, or if you'd prefer to look at a week's trial before making the final decision on the nature of the job offer, WorkAid will carry out any job coaching if that's what's needed to ensure all goes to plan. It's totally natural for you to feel a little concerned if WorkAid put forward somebody with relatively high support needs. You might be thinking, will they ever really be able to do the job even once they've had a period of specialist job coaching? Let me introduce you to Francis Price. I've known him nearly 15 years. He lives a few miles away from my home in southwest London. And I'm going around to see him because we're off to the seaside for an afternoon. Now, can you tell me on this map, where, where, where's London? Do you know where London is on that map? Where do you think London is? No, that's, that's, that's the south coast, that's the sea. I've got four cards here. You've got to turn one over, Francis. Turn over a card. Any card. Right. Can you read that? It's got a B in it. It's got a B, yeah. It starts with a B. It's a, um, 
It's an O. It's quite it's tricky, old, isn't it? Yeah, so it's old. So sh shall I read it for you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to Bogner Regis. Okay. How cool is that? Bogner Regis. Bogner Regis. That's a little glimpse into the life of Francis Price. I could say that he struggles to have much awareness of the world around him. I could say that he barely reads or writes. I could say that he has little concept of the relative values of money, would find it hard to cook a meal for himself, and wouldn't be able to travel much further than five miles from home before getting lost. I could say that without the love and support of his mum and his grandma, Francis would find it hard just to stay on his own two feet. But it doesn't really matter what I say. Let's hear what these people say. He's a lovely, lively character. He's always smiling. Uh, he's very energetic. Um, if I could bottle his energy up, um, I certainly would. Um, and have some for myself. Punctual, enthusiastic. Really cool guy. Uh, always got a smile on his face, really good at his job. Um, and when he's here, the place is a much happier place. Um, and it's really great to have him working here. Polite, sweet, hard worker. And I love him. I love him too much. <laughs> oh God. Every day I read. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When Francis started his job all those years ago, he had some intensive support from a specialist recruitment agency in Wandsworth, an agency as it happens that I managed. But if he'd been living in West Sussex at the time, he would have got a similar service from the Audingbourne Trust. Bet you'd love to have a Francis Price working for you, or maybe a Natasha Mills. I'm predicting that her next 12 years of employment will be as impressive as Francis's last 12 years. The Acorn Centre is owned by the Audingbourne Trust and specialises in placing people into jobs in the catering industry. Natasha's just completing her training there. So what you've got to do, Tash, is put a great big blob of cream on there and then we'll have like a couple of pieces of strawberry on each one like that. Okay? So crack on. Lovely stuff. That's it. Oh, a bit of chocolate brackets around the top. It's really good here. Yes, it is really good. Yeah. That's good. Because you get more confidence of going out in the world and doing your own thing. Yeah, like a different job. Yeah, then it's your, the way it is now. You move on, not here forever. Yeah. And I've actually managed to get myself a full time job. Not bad. I like that kind of. At West Sussex County Council we've made the decision to employ more people with learning disabilities and that's because we feel we're missing out with some potentially talented employees and we wanted a workforce that better represented the community living in the county. And I believe you just offered um, Natasha Mills a position. That's right, Natasha's job is one of up to 40 that we're going to have available this year. She's joining us as a catering assistant at a local school. All our vacancies are being managed through WorkAid at the Aldingbourne Trust. And I should say at this point that we're hoping to make some positions available to people less able than Natasha. Could you explain more? Yes, sure. Here's an example. I met with three managers, senior managers from our facilities management service, and we looked at what type of roles they could offer people with learning disabilities. And that was things like photocopying, scanning, data input, and each manager had about seven hours a week. To be honest, it's the sort of work they don't get time to do because they're too busy doing their day jobs. But they wouldn't have thought of offering that to someone um, as a job because they wouldn't have seen seven hours a week as viable. But by pulling the post together, we've come up with a 21 hour a week position. Oh, right, that's interesting because three sevens are 21. Exactly. This creative approach explained by Elizabeth is exactly the type of approach that really works. Yes, I know there's every likelihood that West Sussex County Council is a larger employer than you, and they will probably have more opportunities for this type of creativity. But isn't there potential to get something going at your organisation? You've watched this film for nearly 15 minutes now. All I'm asking you to do is spend the next 15 minutes thinking about how your organisation could give a green light of opportunity to somebody with learning disabilities, Asperger's syndrome, or a different invisible disability. 
I'm not going to end this film by saying that all people with learning disabilities are really reliable and they're all really happy in their work, because it's not true. Surprise, surprise, just like you and me, once in a while, work is the last place they want to be. But what I will say is this. If you employ somebody with a learning disability, I can promise you that you, your staff team, and your organization as a whole will really learn something from your new employee, and you'll become stronger through that learning. Show them how to give it the green light, Jane. <laughs>